And we had 17 community group partners this year that assisted us with putting up flags. Um, this chart here is uh, showing our paid subscriptions over time since inception of the program. Um, important to note that this is paid subscriptions only. So we uh, have flags that go up um, at certain nonprofits around the city and the schools and so forth for which they don't pay for. Those are in addition to these. So you can see over time, um, we kind of hit a high point in 2017. Um, we fell off in this period and quite frankly, we weren't doing a lot of advertising and engagement. Um, we were kind of going through some database challenges through that period of time. And so we just sort of held off on trying to grow the program. But now we're starting to do that, we're starting to grow the program again. So you can see at the end of 2020, we were back up to 1970. Um, some of the door hanging things that we just did uh, generated probably about 30 to 40 new orders so far. So that's, that's good news. Um, so we feel like we're, we're headed back maybe to get above this uh, 2000 number again. Um, our community groups, this is how much we've paid collectively to all of our community groups over all of these years. So you can see um, it's a pretty big number. So over 12 years, we've paid out $175,000 to various community groups to assist us with putting up the flags. So this is just the total amount that we've paid uh, by year. So here's uh, a list of some of the groups that are with us now. So these are groups that have been with us greater than five years. So the way I've sorted this here is the number of years that they've been with us. So you can see uh, Boy Scout Troop 66, they've been right along lockstep with us uh, since we started the program. They've been with us 12 years. Um, the dollar amount here in this column, the 2020 amount is the check that they received this year. And then the cumulative amount over here is how much we paid to that group over the period of time that they've been with us. So this first slide here, um, is the groups that have been with us greater than five years. Um, so you can see um, a lot of these groups, we really appreciate um, their assistance. They're various, come from various uh, organizations. There's Boy Scout troops, Cub Scout packs. Um, we have some other service clubs. The Madisonburg Lions have been with us for a while. Some 4-H clubs, uh, the Worcester Free Nations, uh, the Worcester Lacrosse Club. Um, the next slide is those groups that have been with us five years or less. Um, so again, you can see some of the groups over here. The Triway Marching Band has been with us four years. Uh, they put up flags down around the Triway High School area. Um, Boys and Girls Club of Worcester, um, Chris Chia and Tom Chia have been putting up flags for a number of years. Um, they used to do it for um, one of the preschools like We Care Preschool, and then they switched over to Boys and Girls Club. Um, so their work goes towards that organization. So you can see um, some of the newer groups as well down here. This year, we had three new groups join us. There was a um, BSA Troop 4064. This is an all girls Boy Scout troop that joined us. Um, then we had uh, O'Huddle and Worcester Noon Lions join us this year. So. We really appreciate the effort of all of those groups. Um, I say this every year, but there's no way that we could run this program without them. And we really appreciate their, their assistance. Um, special thank you. There's a lot of Rotarians that do a lot for this program, um, but special thank you to these folks. Uh, Peggy organizes the Rotary Route. And I know there's a lot of volunteers who help Peggy um, put up flags for the Rotary. Um, Don Noble does a lot of flags around the city, puts up some of the city flags over the overpasses, and he does a route up by Old Airport Road, so we appreciate everything Don does. And Matt Yost uh, puts up flags in his neighborhood. So all of those collectively basically saved the club $22, almost $2,300 that the club was able to retain that we otherwise would have paid to uh, another group to put those out. So we really appreciate all of their efforts. Can I add so something those, real, real yeah, quick? Yeah, go ahead. Those are the slides that I have. So go ahead. Sue. Um, oh, I, I thought you had more. Um, so as far as the groups go, uh, something to keep in mind if we need more groups in the future, if we, if the, you know, we really get a lot more flags, 
is that um, if we don't have nonprofits and schools and that sort of group volunteer, companies can also volunteer. Like my company, we did use it as a team building and then we designated a charity that that money goes to. So keep that in mind if your company is looking for some sort of team building activity to do, uh, that this would certainly fit the bill for that also. Thanks, Jerry. All right. That's all I had, Justin. Oh, you want to go over the increase in prices or you want me oh. to? Uh, yeah, so this year, starting in the next season, we've increased the price from $35 to $40 for the subscri annual subscription. Um, the groups will get two more dollars, so we're increasing it by $5. The groups will get two dollars of that $5. So the groups will now be paid $12, 12, about $12 out of that $40 subscription starting next year. Excellent. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Susan, for yeah. your leadership and putting the information together. Um, obviously, it's hard to believe it's been what, 12 years, right? It's hard yeah. to believe and there's been that much, yeah. that much money raised and uh, just a, a great program for us. So hats off to everybody who is part of the flag program, all the sweat uh, equity that you put in and just the time. We really appreciate it. We really, really do. Um, those are my announcements, unless within our group here, if anybody has another announcement they would like to share with the club now, would be the time to do so. Justin, I'm looking for, um, this is Angel Lichty. I have a couple openings for bell ringing. Um, one of them is this Friday, five to seven at Bueller's downtown. And the other opening I have is December 11th, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Bueller's downtown. If anyone's able to help out fill those last couple spots. So December 4th and December 11th, is that correct? Yes. Five to seven and seven to nine. We'll add that to our email, but if you'd like to send uh, Angel a, te a text, an email or a chat, letting her know that you're available, that would help out as well. That's our, for our bell ringing, Bueller's downtown. Does anybody else have any, any information or any announcement? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to kick things over to Tom Kukish, but I will tell you that we've had uh, 27 chats back and forth on the guessing of the snow, which is cool. Um, so that means you can ask a question, too. So you have the ability to ask Chad a question about his business, what he's up to, and go ahead and submit that, and Tom and I will facilitate the Q&A today. Tom, over to you, bud. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, really excited to have <clears throat> Chad Kaufman here today. Um, one of the fun things about my job is I get to go out and visit companies. <clears throat> and there's so many great companies that, you know, throughout Wayne County and in and, and Worcester specifically. And uh, this is uh, the Kitty Poop Club is, uh, is definitely a, uh, a really, really cool company. So um, in fact, there were two people that I, I ran into on my daily travels and they said, hey, have you met Chad Kaufman with the uh, with Kitty Poo, and I'm like, I haven't yet, and I, I'd like to get out there. And they both said he's, he's a really neat guy, and it's just an amazing <laughs> company. And honestly, when I walked out of there after visiting with them, I said to myself, "What a neat guy, and what an amazing company." So uh, I'm anxious to have uh, Chad tell his story to you guys. I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, before I begin, just a, a couple of things about uh, Chad. He's a graduate of uh, Appalachian State University. They, uh, that's a school that beats a lot of very good football teams. Uh, with a degree in marketing and international business. Chad started his career with the ENJ Gallo Winery, working in several different sales and uh, sales management positions. Uh, he then moved into the nonprofit world, serving as the director of communications and development of one of the largest nonprofits in the country. Then in 2006, Chad co-founded Kanos Products. This is a consumer products company making plastic storage solutions out of 100% recycled materials. The company was founded as an innovation think tank and product development company to bring new renewable products to market under the Kanos products and hybrid plastic brands. The Kanos uh, products has distribution in Walmart, Canadian Tire, Zellers, Costco, and other retailers throughout Canada and US. So in 2017, Chad, Chad co-founded Kitty Poo Club. They're a manufacturer e-commerce company that delivers disposable cat litter boxes directly to consumers. Kitty Poo Club is the largest and fastest growing subscription litter box solution on the market today. 
Uh, Chad married his high school sweetheart and just celebrated 20 years of marriage. So congratulations, that's awesome. Thank you. And uh, Chad and Sasha have uh, three very active uh, boys. So with that, I'm gonna turn this over to Chad and uh, talk about uh, Kitty Poo Club. Great, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Justin. For the invite, glad to be here today. I have to say the last time I did the, uh, a talk locally, I think I was at the Kiwanis Club and it was over a lunch presentation. And I thought, what could be a better topic than to talk about cat litter, pee and poo over lunch? So this makes for a, a little bit more of an appetizing uh, conversation. Um, try to make this a little bit engaging today. I think Zoom meetings are, are never quite fun. I participated in a, a Zoom conference uh, recently and they are just absolutely boring. You don't quite get the engagement. So we thought what we would do is I would share a little bit about the company uh, and myself and then uh, Tom and Justin and I would just do a little round table discussion as if we were having a beer or coffee together and kind of answer some questions and, and, and see where it goes. I know many of you on the call today, I don't know, probably at least a dozen or more of you. So at least some of you have heard of, of Kitty Poo Club. Um, before I get started though, a real quick funny um, statement on the on the flag since you guys started with, with the rotary flags. I've been involved with the Whistle Lacrosse Club for the last eight years as a coach. And that's been our single greatest fundraiser. And it's something that we really cherish as an organization are thankful for the opportunity um, to do that. A, a funny quick little story on that. I first, I moved back here from South Florida eight years ago. And as I started coaching, I was thrown this project and, and literally the guy dropped the flags off at my house, said, here's your spreadsheet, go put these up. Zero training. That was all he said. And he left. And I thought, okay, I had no idea that there were pre-drilled holes for these things. So I grabbed the spreadsheet, grabbed my truck and I go and I'm like, I can't get these things in the ground. So I'm literally just stabbing them in the ground and it's cold and I have no idea where I'm supposed to be putting them. And it was probably fell back on, on Terry's lap or whoever it was at the time because all these nasty phone calls came in because people's flags were falling over. And then I was oh told God. there was actually pre-drilled holes for these. And <laughs> so I went back and fixed it and apologized to everybody and represented the Rotary Club well, but it was one of those <laughs> lack of training. <laughs> Great story, man. Great story. <laughs> uh, so anyways, well, thank you guys for having me today. Uh, Kitty Poo Club, I could sum it up in a, in a little 10 second elevator pitch. And that would be it's an all in one litter box solution for one cat, one box, one month, no look, uh, no odor, no mess and minimal maintenance. And so we really set out to create a better litter box solution for the 38 million homes in the United States that actually have cats. There's actually 98 million indoor ha uh, household cats in the United States. And just cat litter represents a $4 billion a year industry. So that does not include any ancillary products or food or anything else, just cat litter. Um, the genesis behind it was as an entrepreneur, uh, and I've really been a lifelong entrepreneur. I grew up here in Worcester, um, started my first business in fifth grade. Um, my second business in seventh grade, my eighth, third business in eighth grade, and my fourth business in ninth grade, and then went off to college and started a, a painting company and had a couple dozen employees. And so I've loved business. I'm always looking for new companies to start and new initiatives and, and new ideas. In all truthfulness, I am not really the most creative um, person. So um, my dad uh, is my business partner and has been in all most of my business ventures. And he really is the product development guy. So he was the genesis behind coming up with this idea. I'm more the guy that comes in and executes those ideas and turns those ideas into businesses. So that's really been my role um, with, with Kitty Poo Club. And I never forget, it was probably back in 2016, my dad showed up at my house and he said, hey, I've got this new grand idea. And when I say my dad shows up and gives me new grand ideas, this probably happens a couple times a week. I'm like, ah, oh, another idea for my dad. Most of these we don't ever do. And he tells me this idea. And I said, dad, that has got to be the stupidest idea you've ever had, literally. Um, and I could come up with a million different ways to poke holes in the idea at the time. But what he didn't know was I was looking for a subscription business to do. Um, in case you guys don't know, um, 
we are moving into a subscription economy. That is the new future of business. Business has cycles, right? It's cyclical, cyclical and it, it goes in phases. You know, back in the 90s, you never really heard of venture capital. And now you look at all new startups seem to be backed by venture capital. So new things come along all the time and subscription is really where we are heading to. All companies are looking for a way to have reoccurring revenue. I was talking to an attorney last week down in, in, in Millersburg and he's trying to develop reoccurring revenue subscription-based businesses into his, his law firm. So anyways, I had been looking for a way uh, that I could break into a multi-billion dollar industry and do it on a subscription basis. Pretty hard to do. Most of those industries are really tapped out or there's some competitive player in a lot of those industries. Um, but I had signed up for a unique company called Dollar Shave Club. Most of you guys have probably heard of it at one time or another. Um, and they were a very fast growing company that <clears throat> had built a business around a $4 billion industry. As you heard me mention earlier, cat litter is a $4 billion a year industry. So I thought if this guy could do it with razors, that stupid idea that my dad gave me, why couldn't we do something similar in the cat litter space? And so um, that set me off on this journey of trying to develop a all-in-one cat litter box um, solution. And so I spent probably about a year, year and a half doing R&D um, on, on cats and testing our boxes and different ideas. And we would invent and then reiterate, make changes based upon feedback. And I actually did that with about 50 cat owners here just in Worcester. I ran a $5 Facebook ad, put the box up, said, hey, I want to develop this new product. I want you guys to try it. Caveat is I'll give you two months worth of litter in a box and you guys give us feedback. And then we would get feedback through a, di um, a digital survey. And then we would take that feedback and, and reiterate our product. So um, we got to a, a, a feasible product. We launched the product in October of 2017. Um, we put up a Facebook ad and in the first 30 days, we signed up 2000 customers. And we knew we had a business at that point um, we just didn't know how to make that business sustainable. At the time, um, our box was being hand assembled um, in a closet, basically, uh, that I had rented down in <clears throat> the southern end of town here. I got a little warehouse um, and uh, we started assembling these boxes. The problem was those boxes took about 10 minutes to assemble. So you can do the math, about 2,000 customers. You get it done in one month and then you realize you've got to do it all over again the next month. And so um, it went over well with the 2,000 customers that signed up, um, and we ended up having to turn off our Facebook advertising so that we could continue to service those as they renewed the next month. Um, we ordered a container of, of litter in from China where we were having our, our litter made, and uh, we were off to the races. Um, in January of 2018, I realized that this was not sustainable, that we did have a potential business but I needed a way to automate and manufacture our litter boxes. And so that set us out on a, on a journey to build and engineer um, some manufacturing equipment that could do this. And what we found out was that there wasn't anything out there that could do what we wanted to be done or, or we had done. And so um, we, we custom built a few machines um, that took five months to build. Uh, we didn't do it. We outsourced that to a company um, and we received our first uh, two machines in January of 2000 or I'm sorry, May of 2018. And um, that's really when we began to scale the business. And we took off pretty fast. I think we had about 5,000 customers uh, in May of 2018, and we're shipping over 100,000 customers a month now. And so those operations have really scaled up and we have a you know a pretty sizable operation. We share some of our uh, warehousing space with Justin Starlin and the compact crew over there. So we have about half the warehouse, they have about half the warehouse. And, um, um, the box is really our, our secret sauce. We have several utility patents that have been filed on the box and the, uh, and the equipment. Um, and we do all the manufacturing and fulfillment. So we're not outsourcing to any third party um, fulfillment, fulfillment centers because we're so focused on the customer experience and, um, and journey that we give our customers. And so we've expanded that business over the last uh, 12 months where we've moved from just doing litter boxes um, into ancillary products such as litter mats, scoops, domes, treats, toys, foods. Um, we're really building out our food business now is that's a great subscription-based uh, product. We're really trying to capture 
what's going into the cat and what's coming out of the cat and both ends of that spectrum. So we think we can do that uh, pretty successfully. Um, we've scaled the business pretty quickly. Um, the ultimate goal is to continue scaling it and ultimately do an exit in the next three to five years um, to a big box uh, retailer or brand um, consumer products brand similar to what Dollar Shave Club did. The multiples in the subscription business with that reoccurring revenue um, are very, very high. Most companies uh, like ours are valued on a, a multiple of gross revenue, um, which is what we've been evaluated on by probably 50 or 60 PE firms and VC firms that we've had meetings with over the years. And um, we would be a pretty, pretty good um, target for an acquisition as we continue to grow um, out the business. And so um, that's really the kind of the genesis behind how we got started and where we where we grew and how we how we got here. Um, it's been fun with the exception of our litter, um, which the majority of our litter is silica. If you're not familiar with silica, silica is the um, uh, most abundant mineral on the planet. It's essentially sand. And 100% uh, of the world's uh, silica is actually manufactured in China. So I wish I could get it in other places or certainly here in the United States, but we can't. That, all that business has moved to China. And so um, we source all of our, our uh, silica litter from China. We also have a soy-based uh, tofu litter that does very well for us, a clay-based uh, litter, as well as um, a, um, a DE litter uh, that we're moving into, which is Ditonomous Earth, which is essentially fossils and it functions very much like the silica litter. Um, and so our, our litter boxes get delivered FedEx uh, directly to your door uh, every month. We've built out the, the, a similar system to like what you would experience if you're a Chewy customer or an Amazon uh, customer. So you can log in um, through your phone or on the computer and totally customize your subscription and get product when you want it, how you want it on any type of customized uh, uh, plan. And so that's been also ground, 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 ground. Yeah, you mentioned that, so customized plan, what does that mean? So if it gives us an idea of what that means, so you have a you know, different options for us. Does anybody else have any hear, trouble hearing him? Yeah, or Justin, yeah. you're breaking up. We can't yeah. really hear what you're okay. saying. We can't. You, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Chad, talk to us about the different subscriptions then. It's not just a standard. What, what are the options? Yeah, so we have, interestingly enough, you know, you hear that, that there's 34 million homes in the United States that have cats, but I, I referenced there's 98 million indoor cats. That's because there's a lot of crazy cat ladies out there. <laughs> and, and we deal with them daily. Uh, our customer support team deals with them daily. It's, it's actually a, a quite a funny uh, stereotype. But um, most cat owners have more than one cat. And so people are ordering more than one box. So you can get a subscription based upon the type of litter that you want and the number of boxes that you want. We have one, one customer that orders 29 boxes a month from us, um, which is incredible. I, I can't imagine stepping into their home. Um, and I'm thankful that it's Kitty Poo Club, but yeah, 29 boxes a month from us. I think that's our, our largest single customer. Um, but you can, get, you can get anything customized from uh, domes, for example, that pop onto, our, um, onto the top of the, uh, of the box. I'm actually going to do, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, let's see, where did it go? I'm just going to share my screen with you. Uh, to, okay, there we go. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay, good. So here's our website, and I won't spend a whole lot of time on this, but you guys can see the box here. Um, here basically gives you a little bit of the, you know, different selling features. Um, this is the dome that I referenced. So this pops on top. So this would be a subscription based product that you get. It's $3 and 99 cents a month. And you can choose to get it as an addition to your box. Um, these are the types of litters that we have right now. The other two are, are we've taken down and I won't go into that right now, but they're, they're coming back at the end of the month. And then you can see some of our testimonials here. If you go up to uh, our products, you can see our litter boxes. You can buy just bags of litter. If you don't prefer our boxes, you can um, purchase just litter from us. You can get accessories, you can get food and treats. We do some bundles and we're now offering um, gift cards. And so as you go through this, you can see we start out the subscription builder by asking you how many cats that you have. I'll say one in this example, you can choose your type of litter that you, you would prefer. 
and here's where you can add some of the customized accessories that we um, that we offer. You can choose to have those auto shipped or one time. Um, here we get into some treats and some of our toy functions. There's more on this. We streamline some of this so that we we it's, it's kind of scientific in the sense there's a, what's called a funnel in e-commerce, and so you're trying to navigate people through the funnel in an efficient manner so they don't drop out of the uh, of the subscription buying process. And so once you get to here, it summarizes what you're going to be getting in terms of every week on your subscription. In this case, I just decided to purchase a single litter box, and then I purchased the dome and scoop on a one-time basis. And so once you go through here, then we bring in and say, hey, would you like to check out our foods? And if you do, then you have an opportunity to get into the um, foods added into your, um, into your subscription. And so uh, from there, you check out. And um, the beauty of this style or type of business is that every morning um, we wake up and all of those customers that we spent money on acquiring last month are automatically renewing this month and we're no longer having to put marketing dollars through to acquiring those customers again like you would on a single product. And so we put all of our marketing efforts and money into acquiring new customers and I put a lot of our uh, energy into building a, a pretty world-class customer support team that manages and services our existing customers so that we can keep our churn at a very manageable um, rate. Chad, what is your uh, uh, customer retention rate on a monthly? Yeah, so we see about a 6% annual churn on our customers, which is a very healthy um, place to be in. Um, that would be on par with, with Dollar Shave Club um, back in the day when, when they were, just before they were acquired by Unilever. Yeah. And we're looking at our, so in our business, everything's managed by what's called customer acquisition cost. And so that's different than probably some of your businesses that sell one-time services or products, but we're always looking at what does it cost to acquire a customer? And we're anywhere, depending upon our marketing channel, somewhere between 40 and $60 a customer to acquire them. So that's what we're spending on, on marketing to acquire that customer. But we're seeing that lifetime value of that customer in the six to $700 range, depending upon how long they stay with us. And right now our average customer lasts with us about 18 months. And so um, it, it makes for um, an easy investment in acquiring those customers when we're looking at how long we're keeping them and then how much gross revenue we're creating off of each one of those customers. Hey, Chad, in uh, today's uh, consumer is very environmentally conscious. Yeah. And can you talk about your, your product as far as uh, you know, the, the disposability of it and, um, and is it environmentally friendly? Yeah, it's a great, great question, Tom. And it's an important question. We're actually, um, our team's in the process of developing out an entire eco friendly portion of our website right now to really go in depth in that. It's a common question that we get on our social media advertising and, um, and just through email and feedback from customers as well. Um, our, cust our, our box is actually 100% recyclable. And so, um, and I don't know the exact percentage, but I'm gonna venture to say about 98% of it is biodegradable as well. And so um, our secret sauce is the waterproof lining inside of that box, which is a plastic coating. Um, as you guys know, corrugate is just paper, right? And so paper by um, nature does biodegrade. So it would biodegrade in a landfill. That plastic film that we use on the inside of the box would not biodegrade, but that's gonna be about equivalent to a, um, a, a large Ziploc freezer bag in terms of, of the amount of coating that's inside of, of, of our box. Um, you can dispose of the box, dump the litter and simply dispose of the, of the whole box or keep the litter in it and dispose of it. We certainly don't recommend, recommend that. Um, but if you do dispose of the litter, all of our litters are um, came from the earth and can be easily returned back to the earth. And then the box itself can be 100% um, uh, recycled. And then we also, uh, Justin and Tom, you've been there too. You guys see the amount of recycling that we do internally. Um, we're pretty eco-friendly. I mean, we put a really strong approach as a company into minimizing our impact um, on the environment. And so most of everything that we do internally in our business is also recycled. We do a very small dumpster um, of trash uh, every two weeks. 
And so compared to other, other businesses that your manufacturers that you're all familiar with, that's, that's pretty minimal for the size operation that we have. Chad, a question here. Uh, give us the size of your business. I mean, to pull this off, 100,000 subscriptions a month, what does your team look like, both uh, doing the production mm -hmm. and also sales and marketing? Is that all local or how are you handling that? Yeah, good question. So um, all of our manufacturing is done here, as I mentioned, in Worcester. And all of those employees are you know, on the floor and managing the production fulfillment lines. Um, I think that represents about 18 to 20 people uh, on the floor to run our, our operations. Um, we're, we're fairly automated. Um, we actually just invested in over a million dollars into new automation that gets installed over the next 60 to 90 days. So we're really looking forward to that where we'll be able to about quadruple our output with the same amount of employees that we have um, and so th that, that's exciting. Um, the rest of our employees are actually all remote. We do have some other employees that are, are local here in Worcester, um, but they all uh, work from home. Our entire customer support team uh, is remote. I think uh, all of them, with the exception of one person, all live in the area, but work from their home. Um, my uh, CFO is local, but she works from uh, her home. Our other accounting staff works from their home. Um, I have five direct reports. That's my leadership team. So I have a director of e-commerce, our director of operations, our director of customer support, um, my CFO, and um, my digital marketing manager. And so she runs all of our digital marketing initiative, which is really where we're doing all of our acquisition of our, of our customers. And so I think we're up to probably 30, 35 full-time employees. Um, I'm not sure what we're at in terms of remote employees and we're doing about $27 million in, in, um, in sales a year right now. And we're, we've been doubling the business every nine months. So I expect to be in the, if we continue with what we're doing right now, probably 60 million in sales next year, there's a high likelihood that we're gonna actually launch with Costco uh, in the coming year. Uh, and uh, if we do that, then we'll double the business there. Yeah, and Chad, just to follow up on that, on, on the sales, those are remarkable sales numbers. When you've, I mean, in a, a very short period of time, the, is, is that anywhere near where you thought you were going to be? I mean, does that, did that exceed your expectations or, or were you, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I expected. Yeah, I mean, no, it, it far exceeded our expectations. I knew the market was big enough, right? I knew the potential was there. The question was, could we actually execute it? And did we have a good enough product that people wanted? And so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thrilled. That, you know, this has been like riding a rocket ship and it's literally been strapping in and, 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 and taking off. And so I've, I've been putting a lot of work into building our leadership team, getting the right hires, building out the e-commerce side and the developers, technical developers that we have on our team and adding to that. Um, it's been, it's, it's been a, it's been a real, um, it's been a real challenge because I don't have a lot of experience on manufacturing. So um, any manufacturing I've done in my other companies have all been outsourced. And so we made the difficult decision to take that on and do that in-house versus outsourcing it. So it's been a, a learning curve. I kind of say it's like, you know, learning to build the plane as, as you're flying it. And so, um, yeah, it's been, I've been really trying to surround myself with smart people, way smarter people than, than myself. And I've also uh, engaged um, an organization called Vistage. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Vistage, but um, I joined the, the Canton chapter and that's been outstanding. And I, I have a coach now that's just been phenomenal. And um, so it's been, a, it's been a fun journey I've been on. Mm -hmm. So I always like to get in, I mean, entrepreneurs, you guys think a lot differently than guys like me. And, uh, um, but it, in the process of, uh, of, of starting the business and, and you, you referenced that you thought this was a, a stupid idea from, from your dad, but when you were doing your research and marketing uh, in the early stages, how many times or were there some times that you're thinking, uh, I, gotta, I gotta cut bait on this, this isn't gonna work? Or did you just plow through ahead and say, you know, I'm going to make this. Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely ran into some pretty major challenges. Probably one of the biggest challenges we had at the very beginning was um, 
sales outpaced the amount of litter that we had and we, we, we literally ran out. You couldn't have a worse problem for a subscription-based company where that customer is depending on you to deliver their product to the exact day every single month. And so we ran out and we actually had to air freight an entire container in from China. Um, that was one of the, the worst days <laughs> that we had. Um, no, we never got to a point where we wanted to cut bait because we were always at a position from day one to where demand out, outpaced our, our capacity to manufacture. And so um, probably in the first year, year and a half, we really weren't doing a whole lot of marketing because it was spreading um, through word of mouth. And um, we didn't want a lot of marketing because we, could, we didn't have the production capacity to keep up with um, the current number of customers we had. So fortunately, we, we did enough R&D on the front end to test whether we had a product that legitimately worked for cat owners. And um, once we proved that out, the rest was, was kind of history. Chad, maybe you can talk about your secret sauce. Um, you know, I have a cat box. I had one in the house. And after two days, the dang thing stunk. Okay. So how are you getting a month out of this thing? Yeah, great question. So most cat owners, in fact, 70% of the cat litter market is actually clay. And for those of you that own cats, you think of clay, what, is, what happens with clay? Well, it's a mineral, the cat urinates in the box, it clumps. That urine is actually staying in the box in that clump. So you have to come in and scoop it out. And when you scoop it out, you're taking clay out of that box. And so you're over time reducing the amount of litter that's in the box. And if you don't replenish it, right, you're gonna to get to a point where either A, you run out, or there's more feces and urine in there than there is litter, and then you've got a real problem on your hands. And so um, most of our business is centered around the silica litter. And silica, if you're not familiar with it, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's sand, but it goes through a synthetic process where it's stripping out and creating micropores. And with silica, you have tens of thousands of micropores um, in each piece of that litter. And it's one of the most highly absorbent um, uh, products on the planet. And so it absorbs the liquid, but what does liquid do by naturally? It evaporates, right? So this may be more than you want to know about cat urine, but cat urine is actually made up of 94% um, water. 6% is that part that just really stinks is the actual urine. So the urine, the, the, um, uh, the ammonia smelling part, the urea, stays trapped in that micropore and can't release. And so there you, you, you literally have no odor, but the urine, the water part of the urine actually evaporates. And so with our product, you can literally not take any litter out of the box for an entire month. And you have a dry, clean, hygienic, odor-free litter box with very little maintenance. At the end of the month, you don't have to actually clean the litter box out like you do with clay where you have to get it out and you have to scrape it and disinfect it and then try to replenish it. And ours, you can either dump the litter and recycle the box, or if your preference is to throw it out, you just throw the whole thing in the, the waste receptacle and your new one's at your door. Hey, Chad, if I may ask a quick question. So that uh, referred to the, the urine, but what about the cat poop? Yeah, the cat poop with any type of litter solution you have to scoop. There are some of the automated litter boxes that do the scooping for you and put it into a bag that you can still smell and still stinks. That's just the nature of the beast, right? If you have a cat, you have to scoop the poop. Um, the urine's the part though that really stinks. Um, the, the poo does stink, but it, it actually will de get dehydrated in our boxes and will not smell over a pretty short period of time if you choose to, <laughs> to leave it in there. Quick question for you, Chad. This last one too, we got just a couple minutes, but uh, uh, talk to us about uh, where do you see in your markets grow the most? So West Coast, East Coast, is there a typical market? Yeah, there, there is no market. Our, our market's the entire continental United States. We don't ship Alaska and Hawaii for, for shipping um, reasons, but we, we, we do direct marketing to every single spot in the U.S. We don't see any big difference between the urban areas and the rural areas. Urban people love it because of the convenience um, rural people love it because of the convenience. They don't have to drive to the store to get a box. It's delivered to their door. 
you know, urban people love it because they don't have to try to find a place to go and get it and drag it home to their high rise or, or you know, city living or whatever. So um, we see a pretty equal distribution of customers in rural and, and, um, and urban markets. And we sell literally all over the U.S. I mean, we have tens of thousands of customers in each of the big states. I think you might be muted. Matt, Matt Yost, a good friend of yours, has a question for you, Chad. Hey, Chad, nice presentation. I was just curious how many cats you have. <laughs> <laughs> only a close friend could ask that. So only been over to my house short of a million times that knows the answer to that. I, I actually don't own any cats. I, I never have. <laughs> Shocker. Wow. <laughs> I'm actually highly allergic to cats. I don't have any personal vendetta or agenda against cats. Uh, I have a, a hundred pound chocolate Labrador. I, I do love animals. I see, uh, I see a, a, a cat there, Mr. Rell with, uh, Relly with uh, one on his lap there. But uh, um, yeah, no, great question, Matt. Thank you for exposing that to the group. <laughs> your time today. I know Zoom is, it's a little unique presentation wise, but congratulations to you, man, on um, seeing a vision. You know, your dad, your dad saw that vision, right? And you believe in it, doing the research, building it up to what it is. Congratulations. Thanks for being a part of Worcester. And uh, Tom and I actually owe you a beer when things get back to normal, man. So yeah, that'd be fun. Let's go do that. Thank you guys for having me. It was an honor. Appreciate the opportunity to be here and Love Worcester. I mean, I've traveled all over the country. I've lived all over the, the country. And there really is not too many places that are more special than Worcester. So eight years ago, when we decided to relocate back here from South Florida. Um, we're so glad we did. And it's great to have a, a local company here. Thanks again, Chad. We appreciate it. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. Thank you, yep, Tom. A couple, couple of parting words here, folks. Meals with a mission next Monday. If you don't have your tickets, check out the email I sent you last night. You will also get a email if you have not bought. Um, so requesting your support of that. That's next Monday. Again, let's do that for TJs and for the club. We had multiple guesses on our snow totals. Chris Bailey with the lowest of 0.8 inches. Lynn Mumal, the highest, 5.1 inches. And Matt Yost said a dollar. So I don't know what, Yost, I'm not sure what you were looking for a dollar, so. The price is right, Justin. The, the price, price is, right. is right, baby. What we will do is that will be measured on Tuesday night at nine o'clock in my front yard, and I will post it in uh, Wednesday's email along with the winner. Folks, we appreciate uh, your time today. Again, Chad, thank you. Check out kittypooclub.com. And uh, everybody have a good week. Take, take care, folks.